Good evening. Welcome once again to Sir Ebb's online tutorial and lecture series. For more video uploads, please do follow my Facebook page at Sir Ebb's Tutorials and please do subscribe as well my YouTube channel at Sir Ebb's TV. Tara, to na ta. Welcome to Lecture 103. For tonight's discussion, we will move forward on the other object of interest of the study of criminology. The following are crime, criminal, criminal law, and victim. However, before going on that particular topics, we will just first continue a little bit on the first previous discussion on crime classification. Now, we will discuss tonight on crimes in the modern world. Because if you can remember our previous discussion on the classifications of crime, the following crimes which we will be discussing tonight uh, were not being included. Uh, some was included, however, there are really other uh, classification of crime that we need to know, especially the, this is what we call crimes in the modern world. Now, the, the three, this, this, this three classification organized crime, white collar crime, and blue collar crime were already discussed in the previous discussion. But, uh, we will be defining this one simply. When we talk about organized crime, if we can remember our previous discussion, organized crime is a criminal activity in which they have a highly structured organization a very developed organization in which the objective of the organization why they are doing criminal activity is for the purpose of gaining profit or money for that matter so there are three important elements for an organized crime there is a criminal activity and they have a organization structured organization and thirdly the organization's objectives is to have that monetary uh monetary monetary outcome uh, by doing their criminal activity so for money and for profit would be their objective the other one would be white collar now white collar simply these are type of crime classification of crime which was being defined by sir edwin sutherland uh, this involves about who remember uh, to further define and differentiate blue and white collar crime, we have to uh, just determine who are the one who committed the crime. Why? Because in the white collar crime, the the one who can commit white collar crime are the one who are in the position, both position both in the business and in the in the government. So the only one that can commit white collar crimes. Are those in the position okay both in business and in the government while on the other hand for blue collar crime these are ordinary individuals okay that is why blue collar crime is said to be a crimes usually committed in the streets daily committed in the streets because these are committed by ordinary individuals those in the lower structure of our society so that's the difference white collar crimes in are in the position but blue collar crimes are in the lower uh, structure or those ordinary individuals who are committing everyday uh, crimes in the streets. Now, the next one be violent crimes. So basically, these are just term. However, uh, this this was already a, a types of crime before. However, in the modern world. Uh, any crime that was committed that results to a threat or physical harm. So, that's, uh, there is a result of harming somebody, uh, destroying, destruction would be uh, the result and committed by offender to the victim. In the modern time, in the contemporary time, it is said to be called as a violent crime. However, there are already violent crimes committed before, but in the present time, uh, this is specifically termed uh, as a violent crime because the result will be uh, harm whether destruction of lives or 
a destruction towards the property uh, which was committed by the offender to the victim. That is what we call a violent crime. So the, the result would be threat or a physical harm. Next one would be property crimes. So generally, this is what we call a property crime because this is a crime which has an economic interest such as the crime of theft or robbery, basically. Those are uh, generally termed as a property crimes because there is a what we call an economic interest of that particular crime being committed. So because there is a, a acquiring something there's an object or a property being taken taking off without the express consent of the owner. That, that is what we call economic interest. Now, we have also cyber crimes. Now, remember, cyber crimes is being punished by Republic Act 10175, the Cyber Crime Law of the Philippines, on that matter in 2012. So, any activities, any criminal activities in which is it, it is committed in the cyberspace, okay? Committed in the cyberspace because in the present time we are now in the uh, in the computer world, uh, information and communication technology. We're already using majority of our uh, activities using online cyberspace. So anything that is being committed in the cyberspace, just like for example libel, in which it was the, the mode of each commission would be in the, the cyberspace, okay? Uh, there is what we call cyber libel, and this, okay? Uh, presently, we also have that identity theft in which your, uh, your identity was, was being used in, in, in the commission of a criminal activities in our cyberspace. So, generally, any th crime that is being committed Using our computer system, using our cyberspace is termed as cybercrime. That is being punished by RA10175. But remember, uh, <clears throat> there was a previous law, uh, 8792, the e-commerce law of the Philippines. 8792, the e-commerce law, was the first law that punishes cyber crimes. Trivia yon, di ba? So, RA8792 or the e-commerce law uh, was the first law that punished cyber crime because it punishes hacking before. So, that was the first law that punished cyber crime. But if the question is, what is the first cyber crime law of the Philippines? That is RA10175. So, be Remember that particular question. The first law that punishes cybercrime was RA 8792, and the first cybercrime of the Philippines is now RA 10175. Now, another uh, classification is victimless crimes. So, victimless crime, or this is otherwise known as public order crimes, basically. Because this is termed as victimless crime because there is no clear victim readily identifiable. So, that is what we call victimless crime because simply victimless. There is no victim on the certain crime committed because the doer of the act, the one who are performing the crime, is eventually the victim itself. Just like, for example, for drug addiction. The person has been committing a crime in violation of our dangerous law. However, in the same way, if he's been using uh, drugs on that matter, in the same way, he is the, he is the perpetrator. He is the one who committed the crime. But eventually, he is also the victim. Okay. Another example for alcoholism, prostitution. Those are what we call victimless crime because there is no victim. Basically, because the doer of the act, the doer of the crime, is then the victim. Okay? So that is what we call victimless crime. Common examples are drug addiction, alcohol addiction, prostitution. Those are uh, considered as a victimless crime or public order crimes. Okay? So that's a continuation of crime classification. So let's move forward on the other object of interest.
which is criminal law. So this is the second one because the first one was crime, then basically about criminal law. Now, remember, as I said a while ago and before on our previous discussion, there can be crime whenever there's a law that punishes it. Okay? And in line with the uh, principle of logomacy, there's no crime and there's no law punishing it. So definitely, criminal acts for today were based on our criminal law. Okay? Now, remember, our criminal law is our is a branch of law. It's a branch of law that first defines crime. That is why all of those being mentioned if, of our criminal law are all of those acts and omission as provided or enumerated under our criminal law is said to be those acts or omission that is said to be crime. And based of our criminal law, uh, we will know what do, are those acts and what are those omissions that is said to be considered as crime. So based on our criminal law, all of those are being defined. Secondly, it also treats of their nature, meaning how this particular crime can be committed. Okay, That is why in the criminal law, uh, uh, it defines how a particular crime can be committed. That is why uh, if we look at our criminal law, uh, it, it provides uh, the elements of the crimes because that is how a certain particular crimes are being committed. So those are circumstances or elements that defines a particular crime. Thirdly, our criminal law provides punishment. Okay, So there is a crime and how it is being committed and what would be a particular punishment whenever a certain person committed that particular crime. Okay, So if we can also remember the essay of Cesar Vicaria on the crimes and punishment. So same thing today. All of the crimes are being defined by our criminal law and then there is a punishment provided whenever a person has committed that certain crime. Okay, that's the criminal law. And what would be the sources of our criminal law? Our criminal law eventually has two important sources. We have the Revised Penal Code, which is the Act 3815. That was in January 1, 1932. Okay? So, RPC, Act 3815. And the type of crime, the term, the specific term for a crime whenever it's a Revised Penal Code, it was felony. Okay? If we can remember, that's felony. And the other one was special laws. The Republic Acts, Presidential Decrees, Executive Orders. Okay, those are special law. Uh, that is what we call a offense for that matter. Okay, so felony is for the revised penal code. Special law is termed as offense. Okay, those are sources of our criminal law. We have the revised penal code. And those that is not mentioned in the revised penal code can either be found in other special penal laws. Okay, so that's the sources of our criminal law. Now, our criminal law has three important characteristics. Okay? However, we will in this particular discussion, we will just present each uh its background. Why? Because uh, as we move forward with our discussion, uh this particular topic will be further discussed, will be further be elaborated. But for tonight, we will just be presenting the general uh, overview of the characteristics of our criminal law. Specifics will be discussed sooner as we discuss criminal law uh, as part of the subject of law later part. Now, there are three important characteristics of our criminal law. We have generality. Simply, when you talk about generality, what is being defined, what is being emphasized in these characteristics is person. Okay? And the person according to the general principle, are those who live here in our country and those who sojourn, meaning to say those who visited, who came here in our country. <laughs> so whenever this person who live and sojourn in our country violates our criminal law, <coughs> are subject 
with our criminal law. Okay, take note of that. If these persons who live and sojourn in our country violates our criminal law, are subject of our criminal law. However, there are exemptions of this. We have the treaty stipulations and the other. However, we will discuss that matters sooner. We will elaborate that sooner. Because right now, we will just provide the, the basic, the object of interest of the study of criminology. We will elaborate this later part. So, generality, it's about person. Okay, The person who live here in the Philippines and sojourn visited who came here in the Philippines, if they violate our criminal law, they're subject by our criminal law. Second, territoriality. Simply, whenever the commission of a crime is being made here in our territory, here in the Philippine territory, we have that uh, fluvial uh, area, right? land on that matter. So whenever it's within our territory of the land, so whenever a certain crime is committed within our territory, that would be covered and subject by our criminal law. However, there is also uh, extra and in interterrestrial application of the law. It means to say, uh, there is a uh, whenever it is committed here in our uh, present territory, it is covered by our criminal law. However, there are also crimes committed even not in our Philippine territory. However, our criminal laws still be uh, used or sub that would be subject <coughs> by our criminal law for that matter. So, we will discuss the, uh, the that principle later part. But remember, <coughs> the concept of territoriality specify that whenever a crime is committed within the Philippine territory, within the territory of our land, our criminal law will be imposed on that. And that will be subject with our criminal law. Okay? The third characteristics of our criminal law is prospectivity. Simply, when you talk about prospectivity, it means to say that, a, that, the, that our criminal law is being uh, made, is being imposed forward. Diba? When I talk about prospectivity, it's mean it's a forward application of our criminal law. M mean to say we cannot apply the law retrospective. Okay, we cannot apply it backward because the the law must be must be must be implemented forward. So what does it mean? It means to say when somebody committed an act on that particular time and there was no law yet on that particular crime and eventually after the commission of a particular uh partic particular act for that matter for example there is you have committed a act before and then eventually there was a law uh implemented uh, affected for that matter which now makes your previous act as a crime the question is can this law be applied backward or can this law be applied retroactive definitely no okay definitely no uh because generally our law basically should be uh implemented should be made forward that's what we call prospectivity forward application of the law no retroactive application of the law except <laughs> except otherwise when it is favorable to the accused Okay, or favorable to the person. Okay, for that matter. We will discuss the exemption later. But we are presenting it only the general view of these characteristics. So, generality, it means the person. So, who live, there are two persons that are being covered by a law. Those who live in the Philippines and those who visited or came or sojourned in the Philippines. Covered, when they violated the law, covered by a criminal law. Territoriality, simply, uh, whenever the crime committed was in the territory of the land, territory of the Philippines, then subject of our criminal law. Thirdly, prospectivity, it means the law is being made or being imposed, being implemented forward, not a retroactive application. However, there are exemptions. We will provide a more detailed, elaborate, elaborate, elaborate uh, discussion on these characteristics when we 
discuss on law subjects. Okay? So, for that meantime, I want you to understand uh, the, 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 what is being emphasized on these three characteristics of our criminal law. Generally, person, territory territor is about the territory of the land. Prospectivity is about its forward application. Okay? So, there is Samson. Later part, we will uh, have a separate discussion on that. Now, set third object of interest. So, we are done with the criminal law. We are done with that crime. And now, we proceed with criminal. Now, who is a criminal? Basically, a criminal is the one who committed a crime. Okay? And, you can call a person a criminal once he is being convicted by court for violation of our criminal law. So, basically, that is why when somebody co had committed a crime, and if there's no yet conviction by the court, is that been proven guilty beyond reasonable uh, doubt by the court, then the person is not yet a criminal. That is why part of the the <clears throat> rights of the accused is the presumption of innocence. Is the right to presume himself innocence until proven uh, by court. Okay? Because, as I said, a criminal is the person who committed the crime and there is already conviction by the court for his violation with our criminal law. So at that time, the person is now termed as a criminal. However, in the in the study of criminals, in the classification, there are terms or terms that are related or I would say it's a term. Okay, it's a term referring to criminals. Okay, it's a term about referring to criminals. Now, you whenever it is termed as suspect, normally that is still under investigation, police investigation. The one, the person that uh, said to be had uh, has an evidence uh, implicating that he committed a crime. Uh, there are already. Uh, gathered evidence that the person might be the one who committed the crime, the person is termed suspect. Whenever that the, the person is still under police investigation or subject of the investigation, that person is said to be a suspect. So, however, there is a present term of persons of interest, suspect and persons of interest. However, the only term uh, the difference between suspect and person of interest is this. When there is a uh, gathered evidence implicating the person to have committed the crime, when there is evidence that might lead to his, uh, for his commission, that he is termed a suspect. But whenever this person, uh, no, uh, evidence yet collected, uh, implicating might be he's the one who committed crime, he still persons of interest. So whenever there's already evidence and that person is under police investigation, is term suspect. Whenever there's no yet evidence gathered, collected and the person and the, there is already investigation conducted, then the person is still termed as persons of interest. Okay? Take note of that. So, second, so whenever the person uh, after investigation, and there is already filing of uh, the filing of case to the prosec prosecutor, and then the prosecutor now conducts preliminary investigation or inquest proceeding, okay, for that matter, then the person is now termed from suspect, then respondent. So remember, we will use the word respondent whenever the case is already uh, filed or forwarded to the prosecutor and then the prosecutor now conducts preliminary and inquest proceeding. Okay? that then, then the person becomes a respondent. Okay? So, thirdly, now, uh, before we go with the third term, accused, a preliminary investigation or inquest proceeding for that matter. However, we will discuss this separately. For, but for the meantime, when you talk about preliminary investigation, this is being conducted by our prosecutor in determining probable cause. Diba? Probable cause, whether to help person and then for uh, determine a person whether the case will be filed to the court for that matter. So 
the purpose of the preliminary investigation is determining the probable cause of the crime. Uh, secondly, inquest. Inquest proceeding is being conducted by a prosecutor uh, for warrantless uh, arrest uh, because the inquest proceeding will determine the legality of the warrantless arrest being conducted. Preliminary, it's about determining the probable cause of the crime committed. An inquest proceeding is about the legality of the warrantless arrest, uh, whether the person is uh, will be held as well for trial for that matter, for, for formal filing of case in court. So that's preliminary investigation and inquest proceeding. Third term is accused. So the person, whenever the case is already filed in court, Okay, and now facing trial, then the person becomes an accused. Okay, so whenever he's been convicted, he's now a criminal. So from police investigation, suspect in the prosecution, that's respondent in the court, he becomes the accused. Whenever he's been convicted, he became criminal. So that's how criminal uh, being uh, classified or being defined too. Okay, now. Lastly, we will discuss on victim. Okay, this is the fourth object of interest of the study of criminology. Okay, victim. Now, how? victim, simply, when you talk about victim, the person who individually or collectively suffered from the crime committed, whether he suffered physically, emotionally, or socially, or even psychologically, mentally for that matter, whether individually, collectively, by person, or there are many are being involved who suffered the injury, who had that loss or that uh, suffering on that matter, is being termed as the victim. Now, the saddest part here is, is that victim is being defined as the forgotten person in our justice system. <coughs> Why is a forgotten person? Because the 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 main actor in the criminal justice system, if you uh, remember, the main actor or the the main point, the main person in our who, who's been treated by our criminal justice system is the one who committed the crime. Okay, the criminal for that matter, the one who committed the crime will be the main actor, the main person. Uh, which which is being treated by our criminal justice system. However, the victim on that matter became uh, it is being considered as being uh, said as the forgotten person. Okay. However, uh, our the government provides uh, help and assistance to those who have been victimized by a crime as well. But what I I am trying to say is that our criminal justice system, why it became a forgotten person, is that uh, it is said to be. The, the, the main person of interest, the main actor of our criminal justice system is being, the one who is being treated by our justice system would be the, the person who committed the crime. Okay? And the word victim was been derived from the word, uh, Latin word victima is it said to be a victim. I mean, the, the one who has suffered the injury or the loss or the suffering for that matter. Victima Latin word means the victim for that matter. Now, in the study of victim, we came here the 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 concept of victimology. Uh, simply, uh, the victimology will be the study of the role of the victim on crime causation. Now, what does it mean? So, in the study of victimology, is not about victim blaming. We are not blaming the victim. Uh, why uh, he was the reason why he committed the crime. However. This study is more about its role. And what we need to study, the role of the victim, why the crime has been committed. Because identifying its role, we might, uh, we might provide a measure on how to prevent a person from being victimized of the crime. Because, we, because we, whether we like it or not, sometimes as a victim as we are, we are the reason why a crime was been committed. Okay? Just like, for example, uh, going home lately, okay? Our lifestyle, our behaviors, okay? On that matter, sometimes those are a thing that might cause a crime to uh, 
to uh, commit on that matter. That is why we need to study the role of victim uh, on the reason uh, why a certain crime has been committed. It's not victim blaming, but studying the role of the victim on the crime position. Now, uh, the, the, the origin of the study of victimology was been in the early writings of Benjamin Mendelssohn. Okay, take note of this. Men Benjamin Mendelssohn is considered the father of victimology because in his earlier writings, uh, he's more, he more emphasizes uh, the role, the study uh, about the role of the victim uh, in studying why a certain crime has been committed. That is why when Benjamin Mendelssohn was being considered uh, as the father of victimology. Now, that's it. So, we had already discussed the four object of interest of the study of criminology. Crime, criminal law, criminal, and victim. So, these are the four object of interest of the study of criminology. Now, stay tuned for more video uploads. Uh, if you like then my discussion, my way of discussion, please share. And follow my Facebook page and also subscribe my YouTube channel at Sir Ebbs TV. Thank you and God bless each and every.